are listening to the She Is Podcast by Refuge City Church. We are here for a Bible-based conversation about who you are in Christ. Yes, this is so good. <laughs> we have studio audience. Thanks for joining us today. Again, they're, they're what, so kind. Two weeks in a row now? Right, <laughs> right. so good. Right. I know. The How warm, do we even find them? Warm applause. I don't... You, Cheap pay. The cloud Cheap of witnesses. Right. Oh, oh this is good. <laughs> this is good. We gave well. them each a fruit snack. <laughs> <laughs> we, we pay in fruit we've snacks. Got, we've got one left. Oh. Right. I didn't open it ahead of time, though, so if I get hungry in the middle, you might hear a little rustling. <laughs> If so, Jamie's well, just hungry. <laughs> right. Welcome, welcome back to another recording with us. <laughs> Different week, same character traits. <laughs> um, same characters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, and we're still in a cold, cold room, um, which is, it's okay. I brought the heater I'm back. I'm alert. I, but I'm not standing by the heater this time. Right. I could go over there, though. Yeah, I could go over there. <laughs> Why and eyes. Ooh. <laughs> So we are here this week. Um, so Miss Nicole will be bringing the message. I wanted to say memo, but I don't want a memo. I want the work. I want the, a chunk of meat today. Yeah, because remember, um, last week, Amanda <laughs> word vomited. <laughs> I and, will not. I will not and, be bringing the message, so I will not be word vomiting. This week she's on ready you. to. Oh she had stuff. She's had stuff saved up all well, week. All, all, <laughs> all week I'll, she's saved it up. I'll put that in my picnic basket, and we'll word vomit next week. Is that when I bring the message? Yeah. Okay. So we'll be prepared know, for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my stars. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, so um, the title today, this week, is she is digging deep, and I. I love that because I feel like, like you said to Hannah last week, I think we're kind of on this, yeah. Heave ho, heave ho. Okay, <laughs> so we're on like this track of really pushing in. We're this year, I think we're being called, yeah, mm-hmm. this year, I think we're being called deeper. And so I, I love how the Lord's orchestrating all of this. But with that, speaking on digging deeper, right. we're going to dig into some history facts. Yes. Ooh, I love history. We're going to be some archaeologists today. Oh. I don't know if any of those kind of things will pop up, but I just looked up 50 <laughs> interesting history facts. So I'm just going to read through them. We and won't do all 50. We'll laugh. We'll <laughs> do whatever. And we may just talk about some of them. I don't know. So the, the first one that popped up, and Jamie had saw the picture of the turkey. Oh. It says turkeys were once worshipped like gods. Oh. Oh. In 300 B.C. Yeah. But huh. nowadays they're just part of our Thanksgiving meal. Now we eat them. <laughs> right. Uh, it's delicious. We just eat them. <laughs> uh, number two. Oh, my God. No. Oh, sorry. Marissa just texted me. Um, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Paul Revere never actually shouted, the British are coming. What? Hold on. What? I teach this to my students. I In fifth grade, we learn all about the American Revolution. They say, so yeah, tell this me is actually what false. Said. What did According he shout? According to history.com, the operation was meant to be quiet and stealthy yeah. since British troops were hiding out in the Massachusetts countryside. Okay. Also, colonial Americans still considered themselves to be British. <laughs> well, some of them. But was so, it, were they like, were lighting the lanterns? Yep. Yeah, one is so by, once for, once by one land, one is by, land, one is by, by sea. sea. Yeah. Yeah. And so he didn't yell the British are coming? He probably didn't yell. He probably could have like... Hello, the British are coming. Right. Or the British are coming. Hello. It needed to be stealthy. It, Whisper. Some, yeah. Somehow he got those words out because they all figured it out. Like yeah. it's not like he But really wrote he a only memo needed to get and, to the Minutemen, correct? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Did you just pop your finger out of joint? I don't know. Wow. Uh, okay. Along. Interesting. Um, oh, she's <laughs> she's better now. Okay. Number three. <laughs> the Olympics used to award medals for art. Oh, oh, I could have, I could have been in that. <laughs> From 1912 I'm an Olympic artist. Yes. to 1948, oh. the Olympic Games had competitions in the fine arts. Well, let's bring that back. Come on, that's fun. Um, one time, a hundred <laughs> imposters claimed to be Marie Antoinette's dead son. A hundred whole. A hundred imposters at one time. They all pretended to be his <sighs> dead son, her dead son. How though? If she only Wait. had one son, I, the num- the math isn't mathing. <laughs> uh, okay, his, his parents. Okay, I, I'm trying to pre-read. <laughs> so he he died of tuberculosis at age ten. Oh, his body was buried in secret in a mass grave. Years later, dozens of men came forward claiming to be him because a bourbon restoration was a possibility. 
and a successful claimant could then potentially find himself on the throne of France. Oh. So the parents okay. knew that he Trickery. died, but nobody else did. <clears throat> oh, so they just okay. thought... So they all just Where tried to come go? forward <clears throat> and yeah. say, I, I am he. There's no. been a lot of like people, because of the... Oh gosh, the czars that were killed and their mm. family, like it was all done in secret. And so there's been a lot of like people coming forward that are claiming to be the princesses and stuff. Oh. That was like a big thing in the 1930s, I think. Mm. Okay. So, this next anyways, one that's what that would looked hilarious. Yeah. Okay, number five. <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte was once attacked by a horde of bunnies. <laughs> what? Once upon a time, the famous conqueror <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte was attacked. By dot 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 bunnies. The emperor had requested that a rabbit hunt be arranged for himself and his men. His chief of staff set it up and had men round up reportedly 3,000 rabbits for the occasion. When the rabbits were released from their cages, the hunt was ready to go. <laughs> At least that's what was the plan. But the bunnies charged toward Bonaparte and his men in a vicious and unstoppable <laughs> onslaught. Run away! <laughs> Run away! Retreat! And we were taught, the bunnies are coming! The bunnies are coming! <laughs> and we were taught that Waterloo was the conqueror's greatest defeat. <laughs> Waterloo! Oh, just kidding. I can't, I can't sing. Mm-mm. Uh, Mm-mm. Anyway, that's all you get. Right. One word in a rhythmic but, tone. Yeah, that makes me think of <laughs> Monty Python. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Vicious. I, rabbit. Is that why that's in there? Maybe. Oh, if my gosh. If any of you have seen Napoleon, I almost said Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Monty <laughs> Python and the Holy Grail. Go to the end with the warlock and the rabbit. It's a rabbit. It's a rabbit. It's with fangs. <laughs> yeah. If you can see my face right now. It's great. Uh, uh, that's so interesting. Uh, oh, women were once banned from smoking in public. Oh, oh it's a rabbit with fangs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go back. It was Sorry. now because it's now Nicole recorded to, for your yeah, pleasure. Nicole had to record it, so maybe you'll see it later. <laughs> oh, the government literally poisoned alcohol during the prohibition. What? They Number poisoned seven. alcohol. Alcohol during the prohibition. Kind of Sneaky. Dude. Makes a lot of sense, uh, though. When people continued to consume alcohol despite its banning, law officials got frustrated and decided to try a different kind of deterrent. <laughs> deterrent. <laughs> Death. Oh, they ordered the poisoning of industrial alcohols manufactured in the U.S., which were products regularly stolen bootleggers. Uh, By the end of Prohibition in 1933, the federal poisoning program is estimated to have killed at least 10,000 people. Why wouldn't they just throw the alcohol out instead of poisoning or it? Or stop making it? Or Yeah. Well, I guess they were thinking if people are just dying because of alcohol, they'll stop drinking it. Yeah, we'll teach that. Didn't oh, work. Do you, know how, do you know how many people drink now? A lot. <laughs> a, yeah, a lot. Well, people still kept drinking back then in the speakeasies and all that. Right. <laughs> Using forks used to be seen as sacrilegious. <laughs> Using forks? Why? I don't know. What was religious? A spoon? I don't know. <laughs> Your hands, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> these, the these... Lord's utensils. <laughs> they were first introduced. If God wanted us to <laughs> use forks, he would have made our hands out of them. <laughs> forks, forks were widely, widely used. Eating utensils were once seen as blasphemous. Oh. They were first introduced. I know, these are weird. That's why they're odd. They were first introduced in Italy in the 11th century. <laughs> These spiked spaghetti twirling instruments were seen as an offense to God. And why, do you ask? Because they were artificial hands. Oh, <laughs> see, I told you! I, oh and as such to be considered sacrilegious. Uh, I was wow. thinking because like, the devil is always like painted with a pitchfork, <clears throat> and they look like a pitchfork? I don't know. I don't know. Wow. So, so is weird. a spork allowed? or <laughs> It's, it's only half hands. sacrilegious. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Oh, this is okay. We just we just heard about the Titanic last week at church. Ooh. But this one says that the Titanic's owners never said the ship was unsinkable. What? So now, what do we believe? Mm. Is well, that is this fake history or real history? Like you know, fake news. I don't know. It said fifty odd historic facts. Hmm. So do your own research if you think the that they said it was unsinkable. And yet some say it wasn't. That's for you to decide. Mm. Free will, because we have free will. The Lord has granted us with such. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I don't think we have time to go through all of them. But no. there you go. <laughs> I think uh, Na- the Napoleon the one, was, one was That's very the best good. One were I've they just heard. angry with the way that they were captured? Well, or? think of it. 3,000 bunnies coming at you. That's no, like, no, no. I just mean like what angered <clears throat> the bunny? 
Well, were they Probably. actually angry or were they just like running them up? <laughs> right. Well, and I'm you know? I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. It would be very startling. But then on the other hand, like, I mean, they're bunnies. So, I know. Yeah. Their claws are sharp, kind of. But like, what's the sharp front teeth. rabbit? I'd be like, no. yes, give me the love. Like, come, come fluff my Maybe, life. maybe Napoleon movie. was just a very scared little man. <laughs> he was. He's very short. Very, yeah. Like a cat. <laughs> It reminds me of that movie, The Bad Guys, when they've got all of the hamsters, or whatever they are, guinea pigs, hamsters, and they're, like, taking over the city. They're, like, a giant wave. I don't know. That's what I think in my brain. Napoleon would have been terrified. I would have been terrified. Mm. Yeah. This is good. I feel like we're really on to something here, yeah. ladies. <laughs> we are digging <laughs> deep <James> today. <laughs> Where's your last So if you have more facts about Napoleon and the bunny rage, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> of 94. <laughs> 1794. Yeah. I feel like that would be that would be a fun like cartoon. Like, right? Someone someone should make that. Yeah. Nicole, That'd you could write a book. I could. A children's book. <laughs> Napoleon and the Rage of the Bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Rain us in. All right. Jamie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Should we pray? <laughs> it's never yeah. a question. The lasso oh. is coming out. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Those sound were excellent. Well. Excellent yeah. sound. Pretty good. <laughs> there goes Amanda. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> All right. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you for this word that you've put on Nicole's heart. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you just open up our hearts to receive your word and your truth today, Lord. And uh, we just want to draw closer to you. We want to get deep into your word and to understand you a little bit more today, Lord. So thank you for making this word clear to us. And uh, thank you for for speaking to Nicole. And uh, yeah, we just praise you for a great podcast today in your name. Amen. 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 Oh. I opened my eyes and Hannah was gone. <laughs> she's she, disappeared. She's cold again. Yeah, she's by the heater. You forgot your microphone, though. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, so anyway, um, today I felt like I was supposed to talk about something a little bit different. Um, personally, I've been um, just really digging deep into the word. And um, yeah, it's been like blowing my mind. As Amanda's <laughs> yawning. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so a little over a year ago, I started uh, studying Hebrew, mm-hmm. and it's been awesome. Like at first, it was just like kind of a hobby that I was wanting um, to pursue. It's like, but then I was like, well, I'd really love to be able to read the Bible in the original language, at least the Old Testament. Um, but as I've been just digging deeper into that, like I'm, I'm figuring out, okay, like Hebrew is amazing. There's so much depth to this mm. language. And, um, so I kind of wanted to talk about what I've been learning over the last few months. Um, so back in December, I started, um, studying something called the gematria and that is, um, so in Hebrew, it's an alphanumeric system. Mm. And so each like symbol stands for the sound of a letter and also a number. So, um, and these just have a lot of sim- symbolic and then I feel like also prophetic, mm. um, um, stuff in there. And so, um, you know, I believe that Hebrew is the original language. I can't prove that. Um, that's not in the Bible. So don't like say <laughs> Nicole's <laughs> preaching weird stuff. Like I just, <laughs> I just think it makes sense that mm. God would have created the world in Hebrew. Um, mm. And they're like building blocks of creation. And mm. so um, anyways, I kind of wanted to read Proverbs 25 two, um, And it says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. And it is the glory of Kings to search it out. And um, at first when I was kind of starting to um, study this, I was like, God, is this like, okay. Mm. Um, cause I'm like numerology, astrology, like, no, this is not that. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the letters and stuff, they don't have power over your life. Mm. It's just to like, everything points back to God. Everything points back to Jesus. And that is my heart. Like I never want to get off into like mystic weird stuff. You know what I mean? So I want to be very careful with that and just say like all of these things that I'm about to talk to about today, they all point back to Jesus and he's the main thing. So they're just like showing a deeper, a deeper um, side of who he is. Um, 
so anyways, um, like I said, Hebrew is an alphanumeric system. Um, unlike English, you know, what does A mean in English? Ah. Ah. <laughs> it means A. That's right. A. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of, I mean, English kind of sucks. Like, it takes so right. many words yeah. in other, in Hebrew to, like, translate into, you know, one of our words. Like, yeah. it, it, it's mind-boggling when you really dig into the meanings of different words. Um, so I feel like Hebrew, all of the, just the letters tell God's story mm. and the message of the gospel. Um, so, yeah. Um, I wanted to read Romans 1, 18 through 20, especially the last verse. Um, so let's see. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made or created so that people are without excuse. And so I've always heard that preach like, God, you know, people don't have an excuse when they look mm. at nature, when they see God's creation. Um, he is in everything. Like he is ingrained in all of creation. And I feel like that's the same with his language too, with Hebrew. Like it's no one could do this. Like, cause mm. all of the letters connect in some way, all their meanings connect, um, all the prophetic things that are coming out, like they tell his story. So no one else could do that. Like no human could create this. Right. This is God. So even his language um, tells of who he is. So, okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm like totally geeking out, you guys. So, um, <laughs> so first off. I'm going to get into my snacks. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about the letter Vav. And it is the sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And I'm wanting to do that because every other Hebrew word is made up of that letter. So, like, that letter is hidden in all the other letter shapes. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so, Vav is the sixth letter in the alphabet. It literally is the word and in Hebrew. And it means connection, completeness, completeness or timelessness. And it symbolizes connection. And something I thought that was really interesting is that the original pictograph was a nail used to connect oh. something. So like something that was used to like, you know, bind things, bind together. things together. So um, it represents mankind or Jesus. So, <laughs> and he is the one who connects us to the father. And I thought that was so amazing. Like a mm. nail, yeah. the picture of a nail is shown as the connection. Um, and then every other letter shape in Hebrew has a vav hidden inside of it. Um, so Jesus is literally in every single letter <laughs> of the Hebrew alphabet. Well, and okay, so you, I'm looking at your notes yeah. here, and it's a just a little line. It's a line. It it represents um, a man coming down. But that's how it's. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was just wondering. I, yeah, I think that just helps to picture how it's hidden sure. and everything is like it's a line. It's a line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. And I was going to, um, cause I do the social media, so I will put like a picture mm. of what the mm-hmm. letters actually look like in our social media. If you want to check that out. <clears throat> so anyways, I'll say all that. The word I wanted to talk about today was, um, the word for King in Hebrew and it is Melech. And so it's made up of three Hebrew letters. Um, the first letter is a mem, which would be like our M sound. And then, um, Lamed is the second letter, which is like our L. And then the last letter is called Kuf and it's like a K or a KH sound. Mm. So, um, it's like that really like gravelly sound in the back of your throat, like, <laughs> like you're hawking a loogie. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, henna. <laughs> henna. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. And the, the thing that led me to this is um, the verse in Hebrews 6, and it's talking about um, King Melchizedek and the order of Melchizedek. So I wanted to um, just read that really quick. Um, I'm going to do Hebrews 6, 19 through 20, and then jump over to Hebrews 7, 1 through 3. And so it says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, our king, has entered in on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. 
And you can hear kind of in Melchizedek, that word melech mm. is in there. Um, so this Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. So that's all talking about Melchizedek. <clears throat> so let's get into this. <laughs> Anything on that before I just like keep railroading on? <laughs> oh, there's a whole lot on <laughs> Yeah, there's a whole lot. He's, Melchizedek is a very um, interesting mm-hmm character yeah um in the bible what is it called like when a type and shadow of jesus shows up in the old testament there's like a word for that and i can't remember a type and shadow yeah i think that kind of yeah it's not epiphany that's something else (laughs) anyways it's like a metaphor but yeah he's um and if you ever get a chance to, I wish my husband was here with us today because every time this comes up, he he just, yeah, he kind of geeks out yeah. a little bit because <laughs> it's just, it's such an odd thing when you read about this in um, in Genesis, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Where we read about <laughs> um, Melchizedek. Well, yeah, that's where Abraham, anyway. Um, but it, it's just like he comes out of nowhere. There's yeah. no mention of him before or after. And like Jerusalem doesn't have, or, or, or Salem I don't know. It's just like, where is this place? Like you never hear it. I think it was a precursor to Jerusalem. That's what I've always understood, but I don't know if that's right. Well, but there's just not any explanation given, but when you read about it, it's like, Oh, it's common knowledge. Yeah. So it's just kind of weird. And Mm -hmm. then the only other time you hear about Melchizedek is here in in Hebrews. So anyway, it's just, it's, it's worth studying that in and of itself. They're called Christophanies. Oh yeah. I would not have. Or pre-incarnate. Appearances. Anyways. No idea. <laughs> so what I'm going to so. do is I'm going to break down the word, each letter and what they mean, and then we'll like bring it all together at the very end. Um, okay. So the first letter in the word is mem. And there are actually two forms of this letter. There's a closed mem and a open mem. And they both mean a little bit different things. But overall, um, it means the waters of wisdom, um, of knowledge, and of Torah, or the word of God. It, it represents the vastness of the word of God. And so um, the open mem represents revealed word of God. And then the closed one represents hidden mysteries in the word. And it represents God doing something in the earth. And that is kind of tied to the number 40, which is the number associated with the letter. And um, so anyways, it is made up of evav. And then another letter, the kuf, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. And so, like I said, the vav is um, a picture of a man standing straight up or of a man coming down. And so Jesus is the man who came down and he is the living word of God. Um, And uh, the pictograph that they had in like old Hebrew is of a wave in the ocean. Um, And so, you know, waves start out small and they get bigger and bigger as they go forward. And so this represents how our knowledge and understanding of the word grows as we dig more and more. Um, And as we dig, like God is faithful to reveal more as we press into him. And I just love that picture. Like the ocean is so vast and you know what? I think it's like 80% of the world Mm -hmm. is water. Um, So I just love that picture of like, as we dig in deeper, Mm -hmm. like God, like that wave grows bigger and bigger as it goes forth. Um, So John one, one through five to kind of tie this up. Um, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning through him. All things are, all things were made without him. Nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And this is like one of my absolute favorite parts in scripture. Um, You know, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Jesus. He was there Mm -hmm. from the very beginning, from before the beginning at creation. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is God always had a plan for salvation, he always had a plan for Jesus to come. Mm-hmm. And cause you know, that would have had to been set out from the very beginning. 
And so anyways, that's, that's the mem. That's what that means. So anything on that before I keep going? And that's, sorry, the mem is the first letter for, in the word? In the word Malek. Malek. Yes. Which is king. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yep. So (laughs) word of God. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. So then the second letter is called Lamed. No, Hannah just went, uh, and I oh, agreed. Yeah, like, like I thought you were raising we, your we hand. just got back from junior senior trip, and Nicole explained this already to mm-hmm. us. And yeah. so now I'm just kind of getting to take it in again because it like it is a lot to take in. Because at first she's like, "We're going to explain a word," and then I'm like, "What word are we putting together?" Because there's <laughs> because you you're listening to their mm-hmm. words, right? There's and it's lot. like, well, isn't that a word in its own? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just trying to yeah grasp and take it all in is yeah it's big. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. I'm I'm just scratching the surface. Like I'm still just like God is blowing my mind. <laughs> so good. All right. So the second letter is called Lamed, and it's actually the same word that they use for learning. Um, to learn something. And so it is the picture of it's like a little I don't know, there's a straight line and then there's a squiggly that comes down from it. Um, like I said, I'll show this on our social media. Um but it is the tallest letter in the Hebrew language, and it is represented by the number 30. Um, so it's a symbol of learning, and it's represented by a shepherd's goat or a staff. And that's kind of what the pictograph looked like in the old times. So, um, hey, yeah. I'm raising my hand. Yes, please. <laughs> um, so, you, for the, the numbers, mm-hmm. how did they come up with the numbers? So. I don't know that why they came up with the certain numbers, but because like, they're not always in order, right? It's not like one, two, three, right? Well, the first ten letters, <laughs> well, the first ten letters are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay. and then they start going by tens after that. So it'd be ten, twenty, thirty, forty, all the way up to a hundred, and then they start going by hundreds after that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I don't know. It's okay. a little confusing. I can put a chart. Well, because up then you can just combine the letters together to mm-hmm. make the numbers you're going for. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's how it made sense to me. Because yeah, when you're In like math, you're like yeah. yeah. Like, it, then it starts going by tens. I was like, you've just skipped a bunch of let n- or numbers. Right. Obviously, English wise, mm-hmm. that we're used to. Well, it's like the digits, right? right? Mm-hmm. But you still have thirty, <clears throat> and then if it's like thirty-five, then you would have. The anyway. then you would add in the, the five. letter. Yeah. Five. So thirty and then five or whatever that okay. letter is. Yeah. Just so just curious where they got that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Sorry. All righty. Okay. So the word lamed means to teach or to learn. Um, and I already said that. Um, so the shepherd's goat, I thought was really interesting um, because it says in the word that Jesus is the good shepherd. Mm. Um, so the goad was used to like prick the sheep mm-hmm. to go forward. And so it was kind of sharp on the end and it would like prick them to go forward. So teaching or uh, teaching pushes us into something greater. Mm. So this is not the teaching just like, you know, how, you know, show someone to do something and then you leave them and then that's that. It's like, um, I think of it as this is the kind of teaching that, um, you know, that comes from the saying, is it better to give someone a fish or teach them how to fish, mm. you know? Um, so it's, it's to propel us into something greater, Um, so we need to learn how to dig deep into the word of God for ourselves, not just glean from leaders and preachers. Right. Yeah. Well, and as a teacher, I just have to say Mm -hmm. that this is connecting to my, it's, you're starting to speak my language now too, in that, um, so there's different higher, higher levels of learning. Mm. And so being able to just hear it is, you know, first level, um, understand, but the highest level of learning is then to be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, is to then be able to <coughs> teach that oh, yeah. um, because you have to thoroughly understand something before you're able to fully explain it. And so I think that's, th- that's the goal, right? Yeah. Um, but I love that there's, there's so many layers before we get mm-hmm. there. Yeah, no, that's really good. I'm glad you like said that because um, I was kind of like struggling. How do I explain this in mm-hmm. a good way. So yeah, like when you're trying to teach something, like you have to really immerse yourself in that knowledge. Um, so yeah. Um, the second thing is, so Jesus is the man who came down. Mm -hmm. Um, the first, the like top part of that letter, it kind of sticks out at the top. That's like a, a picture of Jesus coming down. And so he is the one who came and he started to teach us about the father, right? During his ministry. Mm. This is so cool. He started his ministry at the age of 30. Oh, and that's the letter number. Yes. Ah, isn't that cool? Like I just (laughs) thought that was so cool. And it's also 30 is also the number um, connected to the tribe of Judah. 
<laughs> which is the tribe that Jesus comes from. <laughs> um, so Lamed is at the heart of the alphabet. So it's the 12th letter in the alphabet. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Um, so it's called the heart of the alphabet. So it, um, um, yeah. Oh, and then 12 has significant meaning as well. Um, so, you know, we have the 12 disciples, we have the 12 mm. tribes, um, there's the 12 gates in the new Jerusalem. So it talks about in revelation, there'll be 12 gates in the wall around <laughs> Jerusalem. Um, and so 12 represents divine governmental order. Um, and Jesus, he is the king above all kings. Mm. Um, so Lamed um, represents a king overseeing his kingdom. Since it's the tallest letter, it's like he's overseeing mm. all of it. And he's right there in the center. So I just thought that was awesome. Um, and then the verse I came up with for that one is Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. Uh. And he will be called Wonderful wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, which Mm -hmm. those things all talk about governmental order in my mind. So, yeah. yeah. That's really neat. (laughs) That's really neat because I'm just, I'm visually picturing like the alphabet and how that's right in the middle. Yeah. And the government on his shoulders, both sides. Oh, and it's like the scale of justice. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, wow, this so is good. good stuff. Yeah. All right. And so then the last letter in the word is called um, kaf or kuf, depending on who you talk to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, the number associated with that one is the number 20. And it is um, in the shape of a palm. So it's like, mm. yeah, like you're cupping something to like receive something. Um, and it represents a vessel that can hold things within it. Uh, So this represents the priestly portion. And so in the times of the tabernacle and the temple, the priests would dip their hands in and scoop out like a grain offering. And that was their portion for them and their families to eat. And so, um, so yeah, it represents the the priestly portion. Um, And it also represents a container or the power for potential. Um, so it represents the power to do something or the potential to do something. Um, we have the potential in our hands, but we have to reach out and take what God has given us. Um, we have to activate those things. So it's, it's, um, a representation of activating things in the spiritual realm. Mm. Um, and okay. So we have to use what God has placed in our hands in order to see them grow. And he and God expects us expects us to use that for His glory. Um, so, and then twenty represents unity. Um, and then the verse I got with that one is Psalms one nineteen fifty seven. You are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. Mm. So I just thought that was so good. Um, well, and it reminds me of the manna, right? Mm-hmm. And so you you got your portion, oh, yeah. but you had to be diligent with it, and that was that was it. And the Lord continued to refill mm-hmm. that portion, but only if you were diligent with what He was what He had given to you. Yeah. Well, I think that also speaks about trust too, is because when people would take more than they needed, mm-hmm. it would rot, like it mm-hmm. would go bad overnight. So you only take the portion that you need to sustain you for that day. Dude, I didn't even connect that. That's good. All right. So what do we get when we put the whole word Melech or king together? And I kind of just wrote out like a little blurb here. Um, Jesus, you are the word revealed. You were there before the beginning and your words will never pass away. You are the man who came down to teach us your ways. The king oversees his kingdom of which there will be no end. The government rests on his shoulders and you propel us into deeper revelation of who you are. You are our portion and give us the opportunity to partner with you in activating what you have given us to accomplish on the earth. It is all for your glory. So in short, he is the word, he is the teacher, and he is the priest, our portion and our prize. And all of that is backed with scripture. This mm-hmm. is not just let's see if we can decipher decipher shapes and blah. Right. This is all backed with scripture, just like you started with. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is not we're not counting stars and seeing no, how no. they align. None no. of that. This is 
And how awesome is it that the Lord is like, I can't wait until my kids <laughs> sit back and see just how much I love them and just how much I have planned for them. You know, every yeah. little thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I love that scripture that talks about, um, I can't remember where it is. I think it's in Revelation 13. It talks about um, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle will will pass away from mm. my word. Like, so he fulfills it all. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, it's just a deeper, like, understanding. Everything reveals Father God in his heart right. and, and his son and Holy Spirit. And, like, just as you dig deeper into the alphabet, it's like, I'm just filled with even more awe at who he is. Right. Well, and I, so I happened to see this little video and you, you'll have to <laughs> speak to this or study on it and then catch me later. Cause I'm going off of like a little short video off the internet and you know, yeah. that's, you take that with a grain of salt. Um, but there was like the study of Yahweh. And so Yahweh is the sound of breath. Mm. And so, and and so from the very first breath that you're taking, you're praising the Lord. Oh, and so through good. your whole life, and then even through your last breath, you are still praising the Lord. Wow. Um, and so, and that was just a study into the way that it was originally spelled. You know, the, <coughs> what, yeah, wait, so Y-W-H-W? Y-H-W-H. Okay. And so, and it was taking that... Um, deciphering that, you know, and breaking it apart. So, I yeah. mean, obviously, again, this is me. It was me remembering something I've seen. So yeah. study that, you know, don't, mm -hmm. please don't take that as, as gold. Study that. But I mean, how awesome is it that the Lord has so many layers in everything he does? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it so much. So. <laughs> well, it's just like, I feel like he just, yeah, leaves his fingerprints on everything that oh, he does. Yeah. <laughs> so good. And, yeah. um, and yeah, I think it, it can be really easy to, um, and I think we see a lot of people kind of get swept up, kind of getting wrapped up in, in this stuff, like a, mm -hmm. a, a bit too much or mm -hmm. reading too much into it. Yeah. And the thing is like the Bible is full of symbolism. Mm -hmm. Like we mm -hmm. really can't deny that. Right. Um, and so we, we can't really shy away from it just mm. because there's something in us that's like, oh, that's, that's worldly or that's mystical or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, let's look into it and see, yeah, what does yeah. God, what fingerprints has he left behind in this? Mm. And how does that point us, uh, point our gaze more at him right. and mm. more magnify who he, he is? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, digging deeper is awesome because right now we're not focusing on, on the, the details that he put in there, right? Those mm -hmm. details are actually glorifying mm -hmm. him and his works. And it makes it more exciting to look at what, what is going on a little deeper beneath the surface level yeah. that we see. Yeah. Well, thank stuff. you for listening to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We pray that you have been encouraged and equipped in knowing who you are in Christ. If you are wanting to have a personal relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart to stay and help me to hear your voice and grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep in touch between podcasts by finding us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the show notes. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear more from us every week about who you are in Christ.